opening up to a panel of, of gorgeous doctors, I might ask. Aren't our doctors hot? Yeah. They're hot doctors. Okay, the next one. The doctor asks you, you know, do you drink? How often do you drink? You know, there's that little section. A lot of people say, oh, not much. Or, no, not really. I wasn't just drunk like this last night. Um, tell us, Dr. Raj, how yeah, important is that answer? It's, it's really important because your doctor may be prescribing medications for you. They may be ordering certain tests. And alcohol may have an interaction with those things. So it's really important. And I think what, what Suzanne just said, you know, we're not there to judge you. We're there to help you. We've heard it all before. And it's just really important to be honest about it. OK, now this one's going to uh, Dr. Amy. This lie, when people say that they don't smoke, that they don't smoke at all. As a dermatologist, what do you have to say about that? Well, for two reasons I'd like to know if someone's smoking. One is I prescribe the birth control pill quite often for acne. Mm. And if someone's smoking, especially if they're over 35, it's contraindicated. They can have a stroke, so it's really serious. Wow, so it's a life lie. It is. But, and the second could, reason yeah. is that in dermatology, I'm often doing procedures and operating, and people do not heal as well when they're smoking. So, mm. And a lot of people don't know that. Got it. OK. Now, this is another one. This is, a, I think, very important. When people are asked, do they use any type of narcotics, meaning illegal narcotics, a lot of people use illegal narcotics. That's just that's the state of our nation, the state of the world. The doctor asks you that. Do you tell the truth? Or do, or do you fear going to jail or something and not tell the truth? Yeah. We're not in the business of sending people to jail or calling the police. We're there to treat them as the best we can. And so it's really important to be honest. Narcotics are very important to know about. If you're going to do a surgery or a procedure like I do on people every day, if you're going to give them anesthesia, it's so important to know because they may need different medicines. They could have very bad reactions. And what about even just normal medications? That Absolutely. Could, like, like a cocaine or something could go bad with another totally. medication. Totally, yes. Absolutely, you need to know that. OK. Another one. When they come to you and they've had some type of infection, and they're like, oh, I finished all my prescription antibiotics. I really did. You told me to finish the whole bottle, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I did. <laughs> OK, tell us about that. Yeah, it's, what happens is you start to feel better, and then you think, OK, I'll just stop. I think I'm good. How but many times have people done that? Or the antibiotics? Yeah, it's so tough. Because antibiotics, Dr. Sumner, they're like, a, like a miracle drug. It's like after day two, you're like, well, I'm I feel ready better. to go yeah. back to the world. <laughs> Why should I keep taking this pill? Yes. But a couple things happen. It could kill most of the bacteria that it was treating. And then what didn't get killed could then resurge and then cause an infection again, which is why you're back there. What about if your friend has some antibiotics? And you know that you take, uh, I don't you know, know penicillin. And, and like, have... give me some of your penicillin, girl. I'm sick. <laughs> It's, it's, one of the, it's one of the worst things you can do. I mean, it, you may even look at it and say, oh, I think I've taken that before. Yeah. But there's a method to the whole madness of what's prescribed for what, why this is three days, why this is five days. Everything covers different bacteria. You're going to, A, not treat what you have, and B, hold off from getting the treatment that you need. And that one is illegal to take somebody's other and medication. <laughs> we'll be right back. panel of doctors in the house answering the most embarrassing medical questions that we usually avoid asking because we feel like we're the only people in the world that have that issue. Um, somebody else has a question. Where's Amanda? Amanda has a question? Hi, Amanda. Let me come up, up the stairs to you. What's your question? Um, my stepmother has a fierce mustache problem. <laughs> so what is the most effective way for her to get rid of that? Is she going to be mad at you for saying that? I don't really care. No. You know, oh, you said you don't care. Ooh. <laughs> OK, what do we do about stepmom's mustache? A lot of women have unwanted hair in their face. First, a lot of them shave. It's something that women don't talk about. A lot of women shave their face. I don't want any woman to ever shave her face. It's defeminizing. It makes a woman feel really bad and like, more like a man. So I like uh, permanent hair removal solutions, which would be either electrolysis or a laser. But waxing and plucking are fine also. Wow. And then how do you tell somebody they have a mustache? <laughs> You can just say, oh, you know, I had a few extra hairs on the side of my lip, <laughs> and my doctor lasered them for me. I think I see, like, maybe a couple on yours, or have you ever done that? Let's Something go like together. <laughs> right. OK. It could be a right. stepmother-daughter bonding. <laughs> Where's Jill? Hi, Jill. Coming on down. Y'all are making me work today. Oh, OK. Jill, what's your question? 
I was just wondering about discoloration on your tongue. Like, at sometimes it can appear a little white in nature. Oh, like and the coating kind the of thing? The coating, yeah. I was wondering what causes that. What does cause that coating, <laughs> white coating on the tongue? It's okay to have a little bit of a film on your tongue. We all get that. You were talking, Dr. Raj was talking about morning breath. And when, what happens is you've got bacteria in, in your mouth and it just sort of forms that film. One thing you can do is brush your tongue. Every single time, it's actually good for your breath also. Every single time I brush my teeth, brush my tongue with the same toothbrush, mm -hmm. just brush your tongue. And if it's really white, and it happens a lot, that could actually be something called oral thrush, which is a type of fungal infection. So if it's really white, and it happens a lot, that you do want to get that checked out. A little bit's okay, and that's fine. I think the brushing the tongue is really important. I've even gotten an oule. You know the like the scraper, yes, yeah. a tongue the brusher. Yeah. They have them in the in the um, in the drugstores. Drug mm -hmm. You know, and they look, it's like this handle of a toothbrush kind, of, and has a little thing, and you go. Mm -hmm. uh. But I got this old-fashioned one. I got it from um, what is his name? What is that Indian famous doctor man? And Chopra. he like Deepak heals the Chopra. world. What's his name? Deepak, Deepak Chopra. Chopra. Yes, Deepak <laughs> Chopra. He called me up and hooked me up. No, I went to his, uh, I went to his store. Like he has these stores, and I got this one. It's metal, and it's shaped like a U. Have you guys seen those kind? Uh, yeah. And you they just put it in India. I use Everyone every in single India. Morning. Oh, they have them in India. Yeah, yeah. everyone has. They're oh, great for bad breath also. They're great yeah. for bad breath. And then you see how the white stuff come out. Yeah. And then I do the yeah. side. <laughs> and then you. <laughs> <laughs> At least my breath ain't be stinking after I use it. All right. Next question is Jennifer. Jennifer, come on over, Jennifer. What's your question? Hi. This has happened sometimes in the past where something was really, really funny and a little bit of pee came out. When you were laughing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I just wanted to know if if something's wrong with me or am I doomed to wear diapers when I'm old lady? <laughs> no, 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 no diapers. You know, first of all, I mean, I think most of us were girls, right? And most girls have a little more, many girls have more of that problem. And it's interesting as you mature and the muscles and sort of the brain body connection matures, you have less of that. Then as we age, that muscular sling that holds all your pelvic organs in can weaken and you're not doomed to a diaper. What you can do is sort of preventative measures before you have kids is even the best. But I love Pilates and any kind of core stabilization stuff. It's Kegel. really, really important. Kegels are sort of the easiest way to think of it, but Kegels are just the one little area, and really it's the entire you know what a Kegel is? pelvic floor. Yeah. Do you guys know yeah. how to do that? People right know what a Kegel now. is. About <laughs> five years ago, when I, I first did the Tyra show, I'd be like, what's a Kegel? And they're like, I don't know. I was like, well, we can all do it right now. Nobody's going to know. <laughs> It's like squeezing those muscles down there. Okay. But it's really, it's a workout for your pelvic floor. Yeah. And what you want to do is prevent all of those organs from, from coming down, and then that will help you to hold your urine. Got it, when we're laughing and when something's funny. And many other activities. Okay. So, Tiara, Tiara has a question. Hi, you've been talking in all this time. I love you. Hi. Um, okay, Thank so you. this is really embarrassing. Like, you know, like when you're with your boyfriend and you're watching a movie and you're all snuggled up. What kind of movie? Uh, I like 300. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I was no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> but like, you know, and we're snuggled up and we're laying together and like I laugh and... <laughs> and he's like, babe, you look like a lady, but you smell like a man. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I heard about colonics and, you know, the enemas and I wanted to know if you can do it yourself because colonics are expensive. Okay, so yeah. let's first talk about like the different smells of the farts and why sometimes <laughs> and why sometimes it doesn't smell and sometimes it does. Dr. Raj? Yeah, so basically, depending on what you eat, it's gonna affect how it smells. And there are certain foods that react with bacteria in your intestine and produce sulfur, and that's the really smelly stuff. So eggs, some other dairy products, meat, cheese, those can all do it. Um, and in terms of how much gas, you know, we all produce gas, it's normal. Most of us produce about a liter a day and pass gas about 8 to 20 times a day. 8 to 20 times yeah. a day? <laughs> That's normal. And, you know, men tend to be a little less discreet about it maybe than women, but it's totally normal. It's not something to be embarrassed about. So if it really, really stinks, does that mean you have to go to the bathroom? If there is stool in the colon that's about to come out and the air passes through, yeah, it's going to be a lot Stinky. Okay, yeah. we'll be right back. <laughs>